Welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are first going to start off with puzzles and then we're going to be looking at a game and the last thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at an end game. So now yeah. we can start Hello everyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Tara, thank you for inviting me and yesterday we're going to start with the puzzles. Um, so, and the first puzzle, the first topic that we will discuss is a windmill. Yeah, so in this position, um, all of you can see that black has some extra material and of course white would be happy to get this material back. So let's think what white can do in this position. So how it's possible to no. win. What idea so, do you have? So before, before we tell you the answer, we can let you all think and then after you've thought of it then we can go yeah of course so i can just um, give you some advices so it looks like in windmill you have to use an idea of discovered check yeah and the idea of discovered attack so 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 look at the bishop on c3 and the rook on g3 they're both attacking the pawn on g7 and yeah, you're right and you can just take it for free yeah so of course we don't take it with the bishop yeah because we yeah. have to play at um attacking yeah so we start with check rook takes g7 so the king and the only one yeah and, and then and then it's an important thing to capture all black pieces with check, yeah? So probably we take the pawn, rook takes f7. So should we take the knight in this position or we should do something else first? You, if you want to keep the windmill going, you need to check again. Of course, so that's why we move the rook back to g7. Yes, yeah, so yeah. rook g7. Can gauge eight, and only then we take the knight. So this is how windmill works. And again, we make a check. So a lot of the checks. Rook takes the bishop. Rook goes back. And finally, yeah, the most important piece for white is the queen. So finally, we can take it. Yeah, and uh, it's an absolutely winning end game for white with an extra rook and an extra pawn. And so. And so the puzzle wanted you to find more than just taking with a bishop. They wanted to find the tactic of the position. Yes, of course. Help you. Yeah, and of course it's important when you play your game uh, to make all the calculations in your head, yeah, without moving the pieces. So if you memorize some typical tactic, uh, tactics ideas, yeah, and some typical combinations, so it will help you in your games. You will save yes. your time and find uh, the best moves uh, much faster. Okay, so it was windmill. I think that we go to the next position, right? Yeah, next position. Yeah, so let's open next puzzle. Oh, it's nothing <laughs> about windmill, but this position is still very interesting. So uh, I think that white can get some extra material or even checkmate the black king. It depends on black's answer. Yeah, so it's time for a combination. So Tara, what ideas do you have? So, what should we start with? Like just some quiet moves or maybe when it's time for a combination, we should start with some attacking moves. I, I think that we should start with like attacking moves. Yeah, so it would be great, yeah, if we find several candidate moves uh, for white in this position. And first of all, we have to think about moves with check and with capture. Yeah, so we can start our calculations probably with knight f6, knight e7, rook takes d7, yeah. Maybe like for the first time, these three moves would be up. So Tara, which of these moves um, do you like more? I think rook takes. Mm -hmm. So Tara wants to start with rook takes d7. Okay, so let's try. And of course, it's important to think about all possible answers for your opponent, yeah? So as I can see, black can take with a rook and with a queen. So um, let's start with queen takes d7. Okay, so what could we do? 
So after you can go night F6. Yeah, so it's a four. Because and the book take the book can't take back because it's pinned. Yeah, well done. So this is how we can get an extra queen in this position. Actually, we get the queen for the rook, but it's still very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's think um, now what happens if black captures the rook um, with the rook. So I think that it would be great to make a double check, but we have two variations, two possibilities. So which one is better? What do you think, Tara, knight e7 or knight f6? Maybe knight of six. Okay, so let's think about knight of six. So it's a double check. So no one helps the king, just the king can escape. So king goes to g7. Okay, let's think what we can do after this, after king g7. Probably taking the rook is not yeah, the best. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you should try the other. So I think we uh, can discuss queen g8. Yeah, just to yeah. see if it works. So yeah, can... but I think that after the king takes, I, I'm not sure that white yeah. gets anything in this position. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, let's go back. Yeah, so we calculated knight f6. Probably it's not the best way for white, so let's try something else. So, so where else can we move the knight? Maybe knight e7. Okay, knight e7. Interesting. What is the difference between knight f6 and knight e7? So again, black okay. has just one move, king g7. Okay, so what happens and then? And the next move is finding the checkmate in one, which is queen in two, G8. I guess. Okay, e queen g8. Yeah, yeah. So, as you can see, the king can't move to h6 because of the bishop. Yeah. So, the only one square is king f6, and now I think it's time for a checkmate. Yeah. And so, what we can do? Knight d5. Yeah, so you move the knight back to d5 and, and, the king, and the king can't go to e, e7 because of the knight yeah so it looks like a checkmate yeah i just don't know why Luches says me that it's a check yeah because the king can't get to g7 to f7 it can't get to g5 because of the bishop it can't get to e6 it can't get so yeah, yeah. it's a checkmate but Luches says that it's check so Shame on Liches, yeah? <laughs> so, okay. So let's repeat this interesting combination one more time. So rook takes d7 is a winning move, right? Yeah. Uh, if the queen takes, then knight f6 is a fork and we get the black queen. Uh, if the rook takes, we can checkmate the king. Yeah, of course, if the king moves to h8, it's mate and one in this position, queen g8. Yes, Tara? So, and when the king yeah. goes to g7, queen g8, and then knight d5 is a checkmate. Okay. So, now we can do the next one. Okay, chapter 34. Okay, so today we also will talk about past pawns, yeah? So, uh, in this position, black has some advantage. Uh, so, black has a past pawn on c3. Yeah, uh, but right now we can't move it because of the rook. So let's think how black can improve this position. So what could be so, the best, the winning move for black? So maybe you can think about it and then we'll tell you in a few seconds. Yeah, so I think that, um, yeah, all people who, so look who at watch all, the video. If, you don't know what to do, look at all aspects of the position. Like what can you use? So, 
again, I think that it should be an attacking move. Yeah. So. Okay. So now, did you have something to say, like before? I, I think that I know I, I don't have anything to say, so probably you can uh, tell, yeah, the right move. So if you look at the pawn on C3, it's advanced. So what you can do is you can go to rook to A2. Mm-hmm. So rook A2, nice plan. Yes, yeah, so you attack the queen. Yeah, and this, at the same time, you open uh, the road for your passed pawn. Yeah, of course, if white tries to block the pawn, yeah, you just get the rook. So nothing good for white. So it looks like white queen has to take the rook. rook ta uh, queen takes a2. And what happens then? So when the queen takes the rook, you can actually go c2. Yeah, so C2 looks like a nice plan, and I don't see how white uh, is going to stop the pawn, right? If so, you do try to stop the pawn, you'll like lose your material. Yeah, so probably white has to trade the queen to this pawn, yeah, and then again yeah. you have uh, a queen for the rook, and this end game is absolutely winning for black. Yeah. Yeah, so rook A2 so, is a nice plan probably is the most strongest move. But to be honest, I think that if black plays rook d2, for example, in this position, so position should be also winning for black. Yeah. But rook a2 just save your time. So it's nice plan. And we also want to look at like forcing moves. So that's why another part of the puzzle. Yeah, so. of course. Now we can okay, go so to the next puzzle. Yeah, I hope that no one have, has any questions. So let's go to the next puzzle. And it's the same topic. Again, uh, black has an extra uh, a past pawn on a three. So let's think how black can use this advantage. So black starts and wins. And again, I think that in this position, black has several possibilities. But again, we want to find the best, the strongest and the fastest. So black starts and wins. So take your time and you can think about this position. Uh -huh. I'll just tell you a few things to look for here. So, like in the position, you notice that that the king can't go to g2, so it doesn't have that much escaping squares. So you want to find a way to, so you want to find the move and the right move for this puzzle is actually E2. Yeah, I think that uh, we also have to look uh, at the first rank. Yeah. yeah, so right now we see that it looks like this first rank is well defended, but when black uh -huh. placed E2, yeah, it's possible for white to take two of black pieces, the rook on F2 and the queen on D2. Yeah, but if white takes one of these pieces, yeah, White has problems with the first rank, and I think that black can just checkmate the king, yeah? So if queen yeah. takes the two, Tara, what happens? What would you do? So the right move here is rook f1. Yeah, rook f1. And when they take, you can promote to queen or rook. Yeah, and it's a checkmate. Okay, yeah. so of course, if uh, white takes the rook, yeah, I think that black can probably do the same. Yeah, you can take the rook on d1, queen g1, and so force checkmate, yeah, and you promote yeah. to a queen. Okay, and so... And this puzzle is also about looking about lines ahead, not just... The yeah, of course. ...been after. Yeah, and let's discuss the last, like, one more possibility for white. What happens if white just moves the rook away? Yeah, for example, a rook goes to b1. So what are you going to do in this position? So you can take the queen. Yeah. So and rook takes the one. And then when they take back with the rook, you can go rook f1. And then when they take, you can promote to queen a rook. 
yeah so this time i, I want to promote <laughs> a rook yeah <laughs> okay some changes in this position yeah, so it's a nice example. So uh, usually in chess, uh, like tactics ideas work together. Yeah, so we started with a past pawn, but we also think about like uh, weakness of the first rank. Yeah, so that's yeah. why it would be great if yeah. you keep several ideas in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so probably I think the, all the puzzles for today. Yeah, now we can do something else. Game. Yeah. This is an exciting game and yeah, it's and very exciting going to see it. Yeah, so uh if I remember well this game was played between two chess players, Edward Lasker. Yeah, not that Lasker world, world chess champion. So it's another Lasker, Edward Lasker, and his opponent was Thomas. So uh it's probably one of the most uh, famous chess games. And let's see why. So maybe Tara, you want to say about some ideas so, that we're gonna use in this game yeah, or we so, will say about these ideas later. So we're starting with D4, D4 and it's F5. Yeah, so it's Dutch defense. So I don't think it might, might not be like, like the Dutch because like you're opening your your, your, the F file. So maybe it's not the best for beginners, just when you learn that. Yeah, of course. If you play this opening for black, you probably uh, have, uh, should know, should have some knowledge in it. Yeah. To make sure that you will get a good position. So, uh, but it's a nice opening. So Dutch defense. So uh, usually in each opening, so you have to follow just simple ideas. Yeah, you develop your piece, uh, your pieces, you control the center. Yeah, and if it's yeah. possible, you just put your king and save or castle. Yeah, so you see and why you it develops. Wanna get, this is kind of where you want your pieces to be like active. Find mm -hmm. the best squares, not just like bishop d2, but going bishop g5 so you're pinning the yeah so the knight is pinned that of course on g5 bishop is on much better position than on d2 and probably black doesn't feel comfortable because of this pin that's why black developed the bishop to e7 uh, and i know that it's a common mistake for uh, beginners yeah just to trade the bishop to a knight without any yeah. reason yeah just because i don't know yeah. what to do so i'm gonna trade the bishop to a knight and usually it's not such a good idea because uh maybe in this position the bishop is a little bit better than the knight yeah so i think yeah. that the dark square bishop is good for white and but you don't you don't have to take if you don't then you can actually go like e3 or because there's no, because the bishop is good there. Then okay. So. Yeah, so I abs absolutely agree with you, Tara. Uh, so, but um, I just wanted to say that, uh, like, for beginners, it's a common problem just to trade the bishop to a knight without any plan. Yeah, just because. I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna trade the bishop to a knight. So in this position, uh, actually white I, traded I actually the bishop to like, a knight. Like what once, what it's also good, even if you did it before, but you learned le about it and how. Yeah, so I mean, uh, it's, it's okay. It's good to trade a bishop to a knight if only you have a plan. Yeah, if you yeah. make this exchange with a reason, right? Just without reason it's not good so yeah. chess is a game about planning something yes yeah? so of course we want to plan something and in this position white has a plan to play e4 but as you can see if you play e4 in this position it looks like you just lose lose your pawn yeah because black has two pieces that attack it and white has just the knight on c3 that defends the pawn so this is the reason of this exchange yeah, so when you trade the bishop to a knight or when you just exchange some pieces, you should have a plan, yeah? 
So bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and now white plays e4. So actually, Tara said everything right. Yeah, so without the plan, it's not so good to trade the bishop. And probably it's also possible for white to play e3 in this position. But in this game, mm -hmm. white had a plan to play e4. That's why yeah. this I think change happened. The, the plan was trading the bishop, but gaining the center. That was... They yeah. can just do it for no reason. They... Yes, of course. You're right. So now e4 and you see that a white gets uh, a knight in the center and usually it's good. Okay, so black castled. Um, now it's time to develop the light square bishop. Yeah, so probably this diagonal would be the best for the bishop. And we have a look at the pawn on h7. Yeah, maybe later it will help us. So bishop goes to d3. So, of course, black wants to develop the light square bishop. So you see the pawns on d7 and d6. So, of course, black has to play b6 and then and to develop also it also, like, seven. they don't want to take, right now, they don't want to take the bishop right now because the knight's strong in the center. So yeah, of course. So white feels pretty comfortable with having the knight here. So yeah. later, if white wants, yeah, please, white can take the bishop. But right now, everything is okay for white. So b6 was played. Uh, so in this game, I think that white had a plan just not to hurry up and not to uh, like, not to let the black know the plan. I mean, like what white is gonna do with the king to castle to the king side or to the queen side. So that's why uh, like black can't make any problems for the white king. So this is the only reason why in this game, white doesn't hurry up with castle. So white decided to improve position of the pieces first. So that's why knight e5 was played. And, and they're trying to get, like white trying to get closer to the king. So later they have something. Yeah, you're right. So bishop goes to b7 and again, so like tricky plan, queen goes to h5. Yeah, so usually we don't have to develop the queen like early in the game, but I think that in this position, queen h5 looks like a good idea. So uh, white probably has a plan, yeah, to attack the pawn on h7, maybe to take the bishop with check, yeah. So, uh, and I think that in this position uh, for black, maybe just the best move would be bishop takes e5. Yeah. So... But in this position, black made a mistake. So queen e7 was played. Uh, what was uh, a plan for black, I guess? So after knight takes f6, when uh, white opens diagonal for the light square bishop, yeah, and has a plan to take the pawn on h7, black is gonna take the knight with a pawn. I'm not sure, of course, that uh, like it's the perfect position for black, yeah, but like I don't think that black opening, has any problems. You're opening a king and you have like your pawns like G, like you can always advance them and go for the attack. Yeah, of course later maybe black can play a five and block diagonal for the bishop. Um, so, but yeah, so it, it was a plan for black just to defend the pawn on H7. So now white can't take it, but white made a surprise. Yeah. So maybe some of you have heard about typical sacrifice on h7 yeah and usually we sacrifice maybe. for example a bishop yeah, yeah like the greek gift yeah so greek gift sacrifice so but this game has a surprise because white decided to sacrifice the strongest piece on the chessboard yeah so i i give yeah. i gave you like a small tip yeah so tara <laughs> maybe so, you can say something about the so next the move so the next move, it's really surprising, but it's queen takes h7. Yeah. So queen takes h7. That's why it's important to solve as many puzzles as you can if you want to improve in chess, because uh, you have to make all these calculations in your head, yeah, when you play a game. So queen takes h7. It's a sacrifice, so black has just one move. Okay, and so of course now we have to play fours. Yeah, all yeah. moves should be with check. So what we can do, what would be the strongest move? So, so the next double move, check. So the next move you can use with a discovered check while getting a piece. 
So, yeah, so. You can play knight takes f6. Yeah, so it's a double check. Yeah, and also we open the file for the light square bishop. So uh, double check and black has two moves, king h8 and king h6. So first of all, I think that we can discuss king h8. So what happens if black tries to hide so the king on the last if rank? If the king goes to h8, then you can actually go knight to g6 and it will be checkmate. Yeah, so it's a checkmate. That's why the king has to start a trip on the chessboard. So yeah. king goes to h6. Okay, so we have to find a check. I think that we don't have to move the knight on f6, yeah, because it controls h5. So maybe we can use another knight. Yeah, maybe so. you can go like knight g4. Yeah, of course. So the black king can't get to the light squares and the only square that the king has is g5. So king goes to g5. Okay, so we don't have a queen anymore on the chessboard, but it doesn't mean that we can't make problems for the king. So which pieces we can use in this position? So how can we make a check? Maybe the pawn. Yeah, but we have two pawns. Yeah. Which one? F pawn or H pawn? Maybe the F pawn. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we don't want to sacrifice anything, so we can start with H pawn because it's defended. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that H4, yeah. King goes to F4. It's, I think still like the king also go like F. The king also go to F4. That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what can we do? So next you can go g3. Yeah, so don't forget about the pawns. Yeah, we don't have to think that pawns are too small. Yeah, so we still can use them for making a checkmate. Okay, king f3. So how can we make a check now? So we have a bishop, we so, have a knight, but who can help us? So maybe you can go like bishop e2. Yeah, so we don't want to trade the bishop. We don't want to exchange yeah, any pieces. So bishop e2. Okay, king g2. And notice how the king can't go, the king, king can't go back because of the pieces. Yeah, so the king can't yeah. get to e4, to f4, to g4, to e3. So the king has just this square on g2. Yeah, so next you can make a check with your book. And you can go rook to h2? Yeah, of course we play rook h2 because on g1 rook will be undefended. So that's why we play rook h2 and the rook is defended by the knight. So king goes to g1 and it looks like now we can make a checkmate. Yeah. And there's two ways you can do a checkmate, but one is really cool. So first, the first way is king d2. It yeah. still gives checkmate. And you can also do castling checkmate because you didn't castle in the game yet. So. Yeah, so and probably and this one is interesting. When you get a chance to castle checkmate, then you want to do. Yeah. We actually don't have time to do the end games and we'll do it on the next video. So yeah, so, so it will be something very interesting and exciting. So yeah. don't forget to, to watch the next video. And of course this one. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to like, subscribe and share this video to others. And I'll yeah, see so. you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.